Welcome back, 0k fans, to Nanalith Zidane. I remain your host, Chet, if you're E333, and this next match is going to be between North Chilean G and Dynthroind. So, let's get started. North Chilean G starting out with oh, no, Obsidian. Yes, Obsidian, which is a very, very one lane map. This is the map. There's also side bits, but for the most part, people just go along the main line of the map, so, yeah, that's the map. Anyway, North Chilean G going for gunships straight off with rapiers. Dynefront, on the other hand, going for a spider bot factory. Makes some sense for the cliffs. I mean, these cliffs are bot pathable for all bot factories, so you don't have to go spiders, but spiders do suffer less of a speed penalty going uphill. Or, to be more precise, they're always slow. So, North Chilean G with the first rapier coming out there, with the fleas not quite reaching them yet, and in fact, Dynefront not even going into North Chilean G's base quite yet, but they will see the rapier, and the rapier will see the flea, so both players know what the others are going for, and boy does North Chilean G have to hurry, because Dynefront is going to be setting up some anti-air defenses right now. There's a razor right here. 20 seconds. That's all that there is for this rapier to come in, and actually that's not going to be enough time. The rapier will not get there fast enough. It can be used for harassment and such, but it's not going to be able to get into Dynefront's base. Dynefront, should also point out, is starting out quite a bit more forward. They are at the aggressive front position with the two metal extractors and the three behind, while North Chilean G going for more defensive opening. They are going to have an easier time with holding on to these metal extractors. Though the defender is actually quite far away. Fleas could very easily get behind here. I mean, it would take a lot of fleas to do so, and that's assuming there's no units just getting off the factory platform. But yeah, this defender is actually not in a great position. So it's possible for Diamond Frame to get a flea basically around back here, and then it would not have line of sight. Like the defender would barely not have line of sight through the metal extractor. And here come the rapiers, North Chilean G, realizing that Diamond already realizes that North Chilean G has air. And wow, that rapier almost died. Not completely, though. It is going to live. It won't easily get its health back, but it will live. So the question at this point for North Chilean G is, are they going to switch over to a ground-based factory? Or, which I see no evidence of at the moment, or are they going to try to just throw everything around here? And they seem to be trying to harass using Blast Wings, getting rid of the re Weaver in the back here. Which could work, because the thing is, the position that North Chilean G is in, it's actually fairly easy to use that position to defend against ground-based assaults in this map, because most ground units will have to come through here, or they have to deal with the mountains, and that's a bit easier to deal with. Whereas, like, it's slower for them to get around, but with air units, it doesn't matter, because air units fly over everything, because that's what flying means. So, <laughs> for North Chilean G, this is actually very easy to harass. Dynafroin doesn't really have a whole lot they can do to stop an attack in the backside of their base. So North Chilean G right now just needs to keep pushing, and at this point, they seem to be getting a fairly strong contain. The Razor's not able to hit anything in the back. The Blast Wings don't even really care about the Lotus, because they're just hitting everything, setting everything in the back here on fire. Dynafroin is way behind in metal, and the only downside right now is that North Chilean G is not producing anything. Like, they've really got to be building things. It looks like they're going to be building a proxy factory right here, right in the center of the map, really. They are ahead in metal, but the problem is that they aren't spending it. Which is a bit of a perennial problem. At any rate, Dynefriend looks like they're going to be able to hold off these back assaults. Tarantula's in the back, able to help out here. Defenders is also in the back. The Weaver, however, is dead. That is the big thing, though. That Rapier getting rid of the Weaver is still worth it. It's painful, but it's worth it. Because at this point, it's going to take another minute or so for Dynefriend to get a Weaver back there. Actually, no, 30 seconds. They already have a second Weaver. But still, they have to get another Weaver back there in order to rebuild the metal extractors, while at the same time, North Chilean G is building a, a spider factory of their own. So yeah, why not? What the heck is... Oh. Oh. I didn't realize I could do that. Neat. Anyway. They're building a spider factory of their own, so they will be able to basically compete on even terms, as well as having planes. Or gunships. So, this is... I don't know if you guys are talking about Gamma. Sorry, people are talking about the Gamma of the stream, and as far as I can tell, I mean, bear in mind, the color is compressed. Like, don't forget, the color is compressed. I can't actually do anything about this right now, anyway. So, sorry about that. I mean, I'm still trying to figure out what color settings are ideal compared to the previous settings. It's just... 
yeah, colors in web video is compressed in a slightly weird way that I haven't researched enough to be sure what to do. And yeah, I said it was neat that I can see reclaim cost by hitting reclaim. I didn't realize that was a thing you could do by just hovering on top of units. Although that might be a new thing. It looks like a spring engine thing, actually. At any rate, Dimefreund is... Once again, gonna be losing another Weaver. At the cost of a Rapier, but still. That's... Uh, the thing is, Dimefriend is still ahead of... Oh, no, we're, they're not. They're way behind economically. This is what North Chilean G wants. They want Dimefriend to be in as bad of an economic position as possible and slow down Dimefriend's expansion as much as possible, which they're doing successfully. Hmm. All right, well, I'll have to... I'll look at the video stuff in the meantime in between the casts, but for now, let's just keep going. Everyone in the chest is going on about the fact that the video is looking wonky. It's like, yes, I'm sorry. I don't know how it's supposed to look. At any rate, the... The point is that we have a bunch of hermits coming in. Dying friend basically trying to retaliate through direct assault over the centered well, lane, like, which yes, I'm sorry. is going to be tricky. I don't know how... Oh, yeah, it is a bit dark. How about that? Wow, okay. I... That's a fair point. All right, well, I'll look into it. I mean, it's really hard for me to actually test it because I can't change the video settings during the stream. But anyway, sorry for those watching on YouTube about hearing about it's talking shop. That's really not what I want to do. It's just I don't like having things look bad. So... Regardless, we have Dimefroid finally getting an economic advantage. They do have pretty much the entire northeast and eastern side of the map, while North Chilean G, while they were able to slow down Dimefroid's expansion for quite some time, don't seem to have really managed to hold on to that advantage. Some artillery going on here with the recluses, but that's not going to last super long. Now, at this point, if North Chilean G is able to push into Dimefroid's base, Dimefroid right now only has 20 metal per second into the factory, actually 30 with this, 37.5 with the Weaver. So Dying Front can use that metal, assuming they get the energy to use it with, which they don't currently have, and currently are building power plants to get. And in the process are reclaiming things that they don't necessarily want to reclaim. And, ooh, Eastern Side getting hit by a couple rapiers by North Chilean G. I wasn't sure if that was going to work out, but having gotten rid of that one Lotus, life becomes a lot easier. Although, one of the rapiers will go down. This rapier over here is gonna die. The second rapier should be okay. Ah. Oh, that was an interesting micro. Looked like North Chilean G just managed to get that rapier out of the laser, out of the lotus range just in time. Anyway, anyway at the same time, we have a small hermit reckless attack over in Dimefrain's front fire base. And that doesn't look like it's gonna go well for the fire base, so at the moment, North Chilean G maintaining a very strong aggress very strong harassment presence in Dying Friend's base area. Just need to be able to get rid of the if they can get rid of the Weaver, that's the main target. Like they need to stop the lotuses, of course, but if the rapiers can get rid of the weaver, just ignore the next lotus that's being constructed. Get rid of the weaver, everything will work in that area. That will be North Chilean G's. And while North Chilean G has not completely managed to do much into the front side and to the main front yard of Dimefreund. Dimefreund's still not able to push anything back, ultimately. Now, at this point, Dimefreund getting their own rapiers. They finally got their gunship plant. So they should be able, they're able to fight roughly toe-to-toe. -to -toe, but it's still tricky. The tarantula here is the main thing that actually is giving North Chilean G a bit of a hard time. But if Dimefreund's... If Dimefreund loses that, then North Chilean G doesn't have much they have to worry about here. Neither player going for tridents. Both players continuing to go for as many rapiers as possible, and Dimefriend is winning the rapier war just barely. The tarantulas are helping out. Now, that being said, it's also helping out that North Chilean G's rapiers are off to the side, harassing, rather than in the front lines, helping fight this air battle. So, at the moment, it is working out for Dimefriend. Dimefriend able to defend their front yard, but at the same time, they lose the southeast side of the map, and North Chilean G once again ahead on economy. The downside, of course, is that North Chilean G does not have a whole lot of metal going into their factories. 
they they have 30 metal going into the factories they have 23 energy they need b more of both mostly energy at this point actually that is their bottleneck if north chilean g managed to get more energy though this could turn around i mean the army advantage is still north chilean g's barely but still north chilean g's I mean, there's still a lot of room for harassing around the sides, and there's... I mean, at this point, North Chilean G could actually win a straight-up fight. The problem, however, is that there isn't enough to deal with what happens afterwards. Because, yeah, they'll win a battle, but then, you know, they're not going to win a battle necessarily convincingly enough to avoid losing enough units that Dying Throne can't retreat, regroup, and build up faster. Because Dying Throne can so that's the thing. Dying Friend's in a great position to just keep fighting. They can actually just... They can throw away units to an extent. Not too ridiculously, but they have some openings to throw away units compared to North Chilean G. Just because their production is about twice as good. I mean, Dying Friend has 40 metal per second going into their factories. And North Chilean G has 20. They have this. Actually, I guess they have 30 when you count the gunship plant as well. And we are... Looks like we're actually going to see that come to fruition now. North Chilean G having lost most of their main ground army. Finally getting some tarantulas. But Dying Throne with a similarly small army, but a much faster production. I mean, once this... If the Spider Factory goes down for North Chilean G, which is likely given the fact that they have very few units defending it, I don't know if North Chilean G is actually going to stay in the game. I have a feeling they're going to give up at that point, because what are they going to do? And still, no additional power plants. Or very few. There are some. They're being built... Not sure where they're being built, though. Ah, there they are, over the northwest side of the map. Okay, that makes sense. But yeah, North Chilean G, getting those power plants up. This is actually a pretty good map for wind gen. I'm, not, I'm really surprised neither player is going for it. Like, 0.7 to 2.5 is... Oh, there it is. There's wind gen. So Dying Friend's going for it. And it's good for them to go for it, because wind gen on this map is awesome. That's always the thing to check, is... X, A, and then see what the wind range minimum is. I mean, some in 0.3 here, not great. 1.2 here? Awesome. Even the 0.7 that was on this little mountainous crater here, I mean, the one that we see we see North Chilean G's commander in, that's 0.7. It's great. 0.7 is wonderful. I mean, if you have 0.7, the vast majority of the time, it's going to be more cost-efficient than a solar plant. So unless you're worried about defensibility, that's basically twice as... or not twice as much, but as much energy for half the cost. Yeah. At least as much energy for, for the cost, and quite easily, twice as much energy for the cost. It's always a thing to consider. At any rate, Dimefreund, they are coming in with what appears to be the final attack, as the Hermits are coming in, bearing down on the Spiderbot factory, the Brawler as well, which has no opposition, really. There's no Tarantulas or anything, there is a Razor, but even Razors aren't great at opposing Brawlers. They can... But it's tough just due to the distance. It's the range. I don't know. My brawlers actually are deterred by that. But it really depends on the arrangement. Where the razor is relative to their targets of interest. And honestly, it doesn't matter. Given that the spider factory is about to go down. There's no additional production on the gunship plant for North Chilean G. This is going to be game. I don't see North Chilean G coming back from this. Unless they very rapidly build up some caretakers over in the southwest. And they're not doing so. I don't know what their plan is at this point. They've been accessing metal this entire game. They've both been energy stalling and accessing metal. And their excess of metal has been both due to lack of production and that energy stall. So there's not much to be said, really. Dying Throne just has a healthier economy, healthier production, has far more units on the field. I don't understand what North Chilean G could possibly imagine they could do at this point, just given that they don't have anything going into their factories. They got 10 metal per second going into the gunship plant, compared to Dying Throne's... 40 metal per second going into their spider plant. And then, even then, Dying Friend is also accessing now, but they could very easily turn that around. They could just start building, like, build another caretaker, or get one of your weavers, and then put it over here in the spider factory, or put it over here in the gunship plant, and build more gunships, because why not? You might as well, but even then, Dying Friend still has four times as much production capacity right now being used as North Chilean G. So, really, the numbers are going to work out that Dying Friend will very easily break this. Like, Dying Friend is on me right now. There's not much that's going to stop it. North Chilean G theoretically could if they put a bunch of production in. But it'd be such a tight game at that point. Extremely difficult to do so, and I don't see that happening as North Chilean G does not even appear to be putting much effort into that purpose. They do have a Clokeybot factory that's proxied over in the northwest side of the map. 
I still think it's too little too late, but at least it's something. And they can at least use up the 500 mil that they have. They have excess way more than that. But at least they can use some of it. It's just... They don't really have the energy. They're, all their metal is going to end up being in the northwest side of the map now. I mean, really, this game has just been a demonstration of why it's super important not to excess and to keep building energy to use your metal and to keep building caretakers and workers to use your metal because North Chilean G had this game. I mean, they were harassing wonderfully. They were doing a great job just keeping Diamond from getting anywhere until ultimately Diamond was able to use the metal they did manage to get far more effectively than North Chilean G did their own. And at that point, well, we see what happened. And even then, Diamond is already kind of prepared with a just a battery of defenders. I mean, the Glaze can do some damage here to help deal with this a little bit, but no, it's not going to work. And Dying Frame, realizing this, throws in the towel. What did they excess? Wow! Okay, so North Chilean G and Dying Frame actually had a very similar excess at the very end. The important thing is in the middle of period, actually, Dying Frame had more excess. Interesting. Oh, that's right, yeah. Yeah, that was true earlier on. But yeah, for about... Looks like five minutes or so, North Chilean G had easily more excess. Like... A couple thousand more excess. That was like a flat 1500 coming out of Dying Frame for most of the game until the very, very, very end. And North Chilean G, up to that point, excessed almost 4,000. Like, that is amazing. And given the fact that they didn't even use a lot of the metal in the first place, yeah, once again, it was just a matter of getting stuck at a low production. And ultimately, not enough units got made and not enough unit value was in play and North Chilean G just couldn't manage to hold on to it because they just didn't build enough to keep their army going. Anyway, once again, another game won by excess. Or lack of excess. So that is that. The next game is going to be between... Let's see. Ah, Anarchid and R3, who I've actually never really seen play before, but apparently they're a really good player. So, yeah, R3. New to me, but apparently fairly good. So, R3 and Anarchid on Adansonia will be up in a couple moments, or a couple minutes, so stay tuned. <laughs> 